Japan, new fears of radiation from the damaged nuclear reactors contaminating the food supply. In Tokyo, iodine levels in tap water spike to twice what's considered safe for infants, prompting a run on bottled water. Here in the U.S., the FDA has banned the import of milk, fruit, and vegetables from the region near the reactors. Chief medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta was on the ground in Japan. He joins us now from Atlanta. Sanjay, thanks for joining us. Thanks. What is the story here? Is it safe to drink the water in Japan? Well, I, I think as things stand now for a small population of people, the infants primarily, they're saying it's not okay to drink the water. And, and uh, this is obviously a, a change in tone of message. It's a concern, uh, but not a huge one probably uh, for, for, for the average person in Japan. Look, numbers matter here. Uh, so let me just give you a little bit of context. They're measuring a, a radioactivity levels. They use a particular type of unit for this. And what they found was the level was 210. The acceptable upper limit for infants is 100. For adults, 300, so 210 right in the middle there. Obviously, this is a concern if things, if the numbers start to go up. I've been, you know, as you mentioned, following the story all along, and I know they've been measuring these levels, and there have been spikes in the past. They came back down, but now they say the numbers are up. They're staying elevated, and that's why they made this 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 warning about the about the water. Part of the issue as well, Elliot, is the anxiety about bottled water. I mean, having covered stories like this, I can tell you that the public perception is this water is now bad. They're also being told not to hoard bottled water. Well, unfortunately, those, those messages directly conflict for most people. So I think the anxiety part of this is going to be a real issue. And we're talking about internal contamination, drinking water. There's also the concern if the levels go up, could people become externally contaminated, you know, by bathing, for example, in, in you know, groundwater or water. So these are issues that are going to need to be addressed. Well, help me out here with something that is, I'm sure is very simple to you, but I'm not a scientist and a doctor the way you are. How does radiation get into water and get into vegetables in the first place? I just don't intuitively see how that happens. Well, you know, you, so you have this plant, you have these reactors, they, they spew these radioactive particles. Typically what happens, Elliot, is they bind to dust. And that's where you get this term radioactive dust. That can fall to the ground, that can settle in crops, that can settle in grass, for example, that cows eat. Cows eat this grass that's contaminated with radioactive iodine that can be concentrated in their milk. And that, that's basically what we're seeing. Now, if this dust falls, there are gonna be certain crops that are that are more vulnerable. Spinach, you know, has big leaves, that's gonna be more vulnerable. But corn, for example, which has a thick protective husk, it's gonna be peeled away, less vulnerable. Carrots grow underground, for example, gonna be less vulnerable. And that's, that's precisely what we've been seeing, you know, in terms of uh, upper limits, uh, limits uh, above normal for various things. For example, in the prefix, as you mentioned, raw milk uh, up to 17 uh, times the limit tap water uh, we just talked about uh, spinach 27 times the limit so these are the sort of numbers that we're seeing right now as things stand and they you know again this is a ever-changing story these levels these numbers very important they may change Elliot all right well let me ask you the question that we're concerned about here of course does any of this affect us here back in the United States is there any food getting into the food chain that we've got to worry about or water bottled water from any place or even that plume of radiation although I've, I think I've seen that theory knocked down. How much of this do we need to be worried about? Well, talking about the food and food products first, I mean, you know, it's interesting. I followed this all along. At first, the message from the FDA when we were reporting this was, look, we already screen a lot of food for radiation. But, you know, we challenged them on that, and they say, it's fair to say we don't screen all of it. So then they said, well, we're going to screen all of it coming from Japan. And by the way, only 4% of our food comes from Japan anyway. So that was the answer. And now you heard the latest news where they're saying, basically, we're going to ban these various products coming from Japan, milk products, some fruits, some vegetables. So that ban is going to be in effect. Big question, the question I'm going to be trying to answer and look for is how long is that ban going to be in effect? Uh, you know, these particles, radioactive iodine, for example, they have a half-life, Elliot, uh, about eight days. So once the leak stops, how long do you keep the ban in effect? Uh, some people will say you got to keep it in effect for a long time because there's other radioactive particles that have longer half-lives. But, you know, part of this is, is just sort of trying to do, make the best science out of what you know. Uh, th this, this is some uncharted territory here. All right, last question, Sanjay. Um, am I correct that that concern about the plume of radiation that was going to hit us through the air, concerns about that have pretty much dissipated and, and that has been knocked out as, as, a, as a concern we should take? I, I think for what the person really is, is wanting to know, is this going to affect my health? The answer is yes. Will radiation levels go up? Yes, they have already. I mean, there's been monitors that have triggered in Seattle and in California along the West Coast. Uh, but how consequential is that 
not very consequential at all. I, we, we've talked about this before, but you get a certain amount of radiation just doing your average life. You know, working in a television studio is going to give you a certain amount. Background radiation is uh, present for everybody. But even when it comes to the food product, and I think this is important context, let's say you did eat that spinach, this, ra this, this spinach that has, uh, has these radioactive particles. If you ate spinach every single day for a year, this spinach, uh, you would get the same amount of radiation uh, essentially in one CAT scan. Not negligible by mm -hmm. any means, right. but an impact on human health, not likely. All right, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thanks as always for those insights. Thank you, Elliot.